how to create a falling confetti effect in DaVinci Resolve 18.6.5. Inside your project edit window, go to effects, and underneath toolbox select effects, and go to drag a fusion composition edit to your timeline. You can adjust the length of this by selecting this and holding in control or command if you're a Mac user and pressing D to change the duration. Right click on your fusion composition clip and go to open in fusion page. Inside your Fusion Nodes section, ensure that all of your nodes are deselected by clicking on the Empty Nodes grid. Hold in Shift and press Space. Use the search box at the bottom of the Select Tool window to find an S Polygon tool. Select this and go to click on Add. We will use this tool to draw the confetti rectangle shape, as the control properties under Inspector for this tool feature X, Y and Z rotation tools, which you won't find for the S Rectangle tool. Select either the left or right view options underneath S Polygon 1 to see a preview of your confetti shape above the Fusion Timeline. Find the center of this new node shape using the checkered background in the preview window. Position your mouse cursor 5.5 blocks away from the center point on either the left or the right. Click when your cursor is parallel with halfway. Hold in Shift and click in the corners represented by 3 blocks high and 11 blocks across. Once you have created three whole sides, click on the first node that you have created as part of this shape to make an all-round connection. Holding in Shift will ensure that the sides are straight. If you feel that your rectangle isn't quite in the centre, click and drag your mouse cursor over this so that all of the nodes are highlighted and drag from the border to reposition your shape. According to the Fusion timeline, my 5 second Fusion composition clip comprises of 120 frames as we can establish with the first frame number 0 and the final frame number 119, represented by the two boxes which appear in the bottom left underneath the Fusion Timeline, meaning that the animation clip will play at 24 frames per second. Using the frame pointer box below the right far side of this timeline, ensure that you have the first frame 0 selected. Go to Inspector and underneath Controls, find the X, Y and Z rotation attributes. Click in the keyframe diamond icon for all three of these variables. The aim is to apply full 360 degree turns to each of these angles to create the animated floating confetti effect. In order to add some variance to its movement, I will have each of these three properties complete a full 360 degree turn at different stages of the animation. I will skip forward one second into my animation clip by entering frame 23 and I will add 360 to X rotation to apply a rotating horizontal effect. I will skip forward now by half a second to frame 35 and will apply the same 360 degree value to Y rotation. And finally I will go forward by half a second once more, this time to frame 47 and add 360 to Z rotation to have the confetti shape rotate around in a circular fashion. At present, all three of these rotations will occur once. In order to make this animation effect loop, go to Spline. In your Spline Graph area, tick the S Polygon 1 box and readjust the top zoom settings to see the keyframe markers on your graph, to see the keyframe blocks appear where we previously changed the value for the rotation tools. Click and drag your mouse cursor over these blocks so that they are all highlighted and go to click on Set Loop underneath this graph so that your confetti is always rotating, regardless of the length of your Fusion Composition clip. Click on Spline again to close this graph. With S Polygon 1 still selected, hold in Shift and press Space. To have DaVinci Resolve process this shape, we need to add a render tool called S Render, which should be automatically connected to S Polygon 1. Now go to add a P Emitter tool using the options above the node's grid. With this tool selected, go to Inspector, and underneath Emitter, I will reduce the number of confetti particles from 10 to 2. To add slight variance to the number of confetti particles that appear, I will increment the number variance value slightly to 0.01. .01. To ensure that the confetti shapes don't disappear abruptly, I will increment the lifespan from 100 to 150. And to vary the starting position of the particles slightly, change temporal distribution from all at same time to randomly distributed. Open up the velocity properties, to have the confetti float at a gentle speed, increment velocity to 0 
to add alterations to the speed in which the confetti particles fall, change velocity variance to 0.01. To ensure that the confetti particles float downwards, change angle to minus 90. In order to use the polygon shape that we previously created as our particles, go to Style and change Style from Point to Bitmap. You should see a yellow arrow appearing alongside P-Emitter 1. Click and drag from the grey box of S-Render 1 to this new arrow. And to ensure that each of the particles animate differently from one another, change Animate from Over Time to Particle Age. Now open up the Color Controls properties. Double click on the white box next to Color. As part of this animation, I will make the confetti particles vary in color. The choice of a single color shade here will affect the appearance of these also. In this particular case, I will use a vibrant orange shade using the hexadecimal code hash FFAA00, which is also available in the basic color presets. Click OK. Go to Color Variants and ensure that the red, green, blue and alpha variances have the low value minus 1.0 and the high value 1.0 applied. Untick lock color variants so that color shade changes are applied to your confetti particles. Go to size controls, adjust the size of your overall particle. Here in this case, I will reduce this slightly to 0.065. And again, for variation purposes, in order to have the particles appear differently to one another slightly, I will increment size variance here to 0.02. To have the particles float from the top of the screen, go to Region, change Region from Sphere to Line, scroll up to see the edge of your canvas, set Start X Offset to minus 0.5, and set Start Y Offset to 0.32. For End, change End X Offset to 0.5, and end Y offset to 0.32 so that the line is positioned just above the canvas to avoid any of the confetti particles abruptly appearing in the top section of your video clip. With P emitter 1 still selected, hold in shift and press space and go to add P turbulence. To enhance the horizontal turbulence strength, I will increment X strength slightly to 0.15 to have the particles shift sideways slightly as they fall. And to increase the strength of the Y vertical turbulence slightly, I will increment the value for Y strength to 0.11. With P turbulence still selected, go to add a P render tool from the nodes options above the grid. Click on the grey box alongside P render 1 and drag your mouse cursor to the arrow alongside media out 1 to make a connection and to ensure that your animation effect will appear in playback. Bear in mind there is also transparency around the particle effect enabling you to place images and videos behind this in your project file. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that video is useful to you. If you enjoyed the content and wish to be notified about future uploads on this channel, please like, share and subscribe. Join me soon for another video. Take care.